I invite you all to Yes, I invite you all to yawn. And in doing so, consider the yawn. <laughs> the yawn is one of the enduring mysteries of human neurophysiology. Study of this phenomenon dates back to antiquity, and yet no consensus has emerged on its adaptive significance. Many hypotheses once or even currently believed to explain the evolutionary purpose of yawning are in fact entirely discredited. For example, a common misconception is that yawning reoxygenates the blood. However, there is no change in blood oxygenation post yawning. The notion that yawning might cool down the brain, though popular of late, is entirely unsubstantiated and in fact impossible without a concomitant increase in sweating, which is not observed. And finally, despite an isolated study in which patients were found to orgasm after every time they yawned while taking a certain <laughs> antidepressant, there is no evidence for yawning as a general signal of sexual arousal. Why then do we yawn? The key to this conundrum, to this phylogenetically ancient behavior, can only be found when considering human evolution from a holistic perspective. I, I propose that if we consider the needs of our hunter-gatherer predecessors on the savanna, the reason why we yawn becomes quite clear. <laughs> Flying insects, such as mosquitoes, beetles, and locusts, are not only high in protein, but have also been observed to swarm in densities of up to several insects per liter. We propose that these insects served as an alternative protein source for our hunter-gatherer ancestors, with yawning as the primary harvesting mechanism, <laughs> of which the yawning of contemporary humans remains as a vestigial trait. I think you'll find this scenario is supported by many lines of evidence, from the times and temperatures at which yawning is most frequently observed, to the physical aspects and corollaries of yawning, all the way to the, its social contagion. So let's dive right in. The anatomy of a yawn is exquisitely tuned to the purpose of gathering insects. Observe, the eyes are tightly shut <laughs> to prevent injury from stray members of the swarm. The mouth is distended to its widest possible diameter in order to affect maximum insect capture. The tongue is depressed to maximize what we refer to as ICCV, or insect capture cavity volume. <laughs> and finally, the face is tilted at the optimal angle, which is perpendicular to the insect flight path. So clearly, all the external features of the typical yawn are well suited to gathering insects. But let's probe a little deeper. If we probe into the physiology of a stereotypical yawn, we observe a spike in salivary cortisol levels, a known marker of hunger. We also observe a spike in heart rate, which would have prepared the body for digestion. Both of these effects are in fact also observed in chewing, which is another pre-digestive activity. Uh, in the landmark 1994 study, Field Observations of Yawning Activity in Humans, it was discovered that the most common times for yawning are dawn and dusk. Now this corresponds very well with what common knowledge dictates to be the most common times of insect swarming. But if we transpose these graphs, we can see that the dramatic rise in insect activity at around 6.30 p.m. is followed immediately by a rise in yawning activity. This is no coincidence. This is because these would be the most fruitful hours for gathering protein. <laughs> this correlation scales readily up to the level of seasons. The uh, optimal temperature range for human yawns is between 19 and 22 degrees Celsius, which is also the optimal temperature range for the breeding sites of many flying insects. Now let's come to one of the thornier problems. As I'm sure you've all experienced, yawning is quite contagious. Often the mere mention of the word yawn can be sufficient to induce yawning in the listener. Why should this be so? Allow me to propose a thought experiment. Here, you have a typical hunter-gatherer family. <laughs> the average age at which yawning is first observed to be contagious is six years old. At six years old, the average human is one meter tall. This is a stunning fact, as the centroid of an insect swarm, the densest part of the swarm, is also observed to be roughly one meter off the ground. <laughs> 
Clearly, yawning evolved to be contagious in humans so that a family unit in a pre-agricultural society could coordinate the yawning of every member tall enough to access the swarm centroid by mouth. <laughs> this rapid synchronization would have been strongly favored as insect swarms can move sp at speeds of up to four meters per second, and therefore there would be a very limited window for gathering. We uh, next sought to determine what the prevalence of this feeding strategy could have been for our pre-agricultural ancestors. And using the latest research in insect protein densities and swarming densities, uh, we assigned a p-value to a suite of common swarming insects. This p-value approximates the protein that would have been available to a yawner after a single yawn of average duration. These are, these are some of our cross-species modeling. Um, a yawn in a swarm of mosquitoes yields a p-factor of 0.6 grams, roughly equivalent to a modern walnut in protein content. If we move up to June bugs, we are able to obtain 1.2 grams of protein per yawn, roughly equivalent to one shrimp. And ladies and gentlemen, a single well-timed yawn in a swarm of locusts can gather a whopping three grams of protein, roughly equivalent to one strip of bacon. <laughs> Now, if you consider that these p-values are merely represent a conservative estimate based on the best numbers that we have right now, and that the average human yawns between four and six times per day, it is not unreasonable to propose that the daily yawn harvest of our ancestors could have been well in excess of 20 grams, meaning that a quarter to a third of the protein consumption was through this mechanism. In light of the overwhelming evidence that I have presented here today, I would like to suggest that our hypothesis, in fact, does more than unravel the millennia-old mystery of the yawn. It also completely overhauls our understanding of the nutritional and metabolic dynamics of hunter-gathering. For this reason, we propose that the model for pre-agricultural feeding strategies be revised to include our discovery and renamed the hunter-gatherer-yawner model. Moving forward, our lab is focused on exploring the wide-ranging consequences of this shift, such as its implications for pest control, world hunger, and the recently popular modern interpretations of the paleo diet. <laughs> Thank you very much.